Hi guys, it's Katie. I'm going to do a little more freezer cooking and this is probably going to be my last freezer cooking video for the near future. I'm going to do like baked goods and also breakfasty things and I'm going to do these like one at a time. So this is not a big batch do it all at once sort of thing. I'm just going to do it in the afternoons and evenings during nap time or after bedtime as I have time. So there's a lot of things I want to do. We'll see what I get done. Right now I'm going to make sourdough pancakes. This recipe is from Heritage Homestead here on YouTube. I'll link it down below. Um, I have my batter here, so I'm just going to get started. This is a double batch. Um, I might make another double batch. It just takes a while to feed my starter to get um, enough starter. So I might start feeding it again and do another batch in a little while because we can go through some pancakes really quick. So this is ready to go. I'm just going to put them here on my griddle and um, then I'll just let them cool and then we'll pack them up and freeze them. Alright, so there's all my double batch of pancakes. It's quite a stack of pancakes, so um, they're still kind of warm. I think I'm going to separate them and I might lay them out on a, a cooling rack so that they cool completely before I pack them up so they don't stick together so badly. So here are the pancakes. I laid them out on a cooling rack and I put them in the freezer just uh, for a little while. And I originally was going to put them in Ziploc bags, but I can only fit about six in a Ziploc bag, so I'm going to go ahead and use this container. It's a 48 ounce Gladware, which I don't really like freezing in Gladware. They tend to go brittle a lot quicker than my other freezer containers, but I have no other freezer containers. Um, so this is what I'm going to use for these, and six fit in here, which is enough for a breakfast. Um, and they're frozen individually, so I'm hoping that I can like take them out individually, but even if I can't, six is what my family would eat for a breakfast if we all have pancakes, which nobody can have pancakes without everybody else wanting pancakes. So I have two batches and I'll go ahead and put these in the freezer. And then I think I'm going to get some, um, some blueberries and do a blueberry batch next. What I'm making this morning is sourdough biscuits. I'm going to make a double batch. Um, and this recipe comes from the Cultures for Health website. It's called the Long Fermented Sourdough Biscuit. I've uh, not made sourdough biscuits before. Usually I just make them where you cut fat into flour and add baking powder. <clears throat> but I want to try making them sourdough. And I've seen a lot of sourdough recipes where they're basically just using the sourdough starter as part of the liquid ingredients which I guess gives a sourdough flavor, but doesn't really sour all of the flour. Three. So I'm trying this recipe for, um, and I'm using all-purpose flour, but my starter is mostly whole wheat. So anyway, I'm also, I'm also trying to get away from using earth balance as much as possible. Um, just because it's not a really good fat to use anyway and you use quite a bit of it in some things so I'm trying to find a way around that so what I did is I rendered some lard this is pastured pork lard that I get at that the farm if you saw my piggy video um, so I'm thinking this should do a good job I've never made biscuits with lard I guess that's how traditionally they were made and this is just, you know, lard. It doesn't have any of the stabilizers. If you buy lard in the, uh, like, the grocery store, it has stabilizers and preservatives and stuff. So this is pretty soft, even though it was in the refrigerator all night long. <clears throat> so hopefully it works. 
I don't think I'm going to get like chunks of lard, but anyway, we'll give it a try. Really nice starter. I've been making several things with sourdough lately, so I've been feeding my starter every day. Look how beautiful! Anyway, I need about a cup of this. It's pretty thick though. So, I might have to adjust the amount of almond milk that I add. Okay, there is my dough. It looks really soft to me, but the instructions say it will look soft, so hopefully this turns out. I'm going to cover it and let it rest all day, and then we'll work on these later this afternoon. Okay, so it's been seven hours, so let's see what we have. I'm kind of nervous as this. Yep, <laughs> went up onto the plate, but it puffed up quite a bit, and it's really like wet and soft, so I'm a little bit nervous. But we'll make it work. So now I'm going to add the last ingredients, which is just baking soda, baking powder, and some salt. All right. The recipe doesn't say to um, put flour on your surface, but I cannot imagine that this would turn out well if I didn't. So, turn this out. It's really puffy still. I'll try to roll it out without getting all the air out press it down, I can feel little bubbles underneath my hands. Alright, here are my biscuits. I got two trays and I made them really big because I was kind of nervous about them. So I wanted to kind of get them cut in on the pan quick instead of doing a bunch of little cuts. So. Go ahead and put these in. Okie dokie, I think they're done. I did brush the tops with some more lard. Kind of discolored. That also happens with my sourdough English muffins, and I don't know what it is. I know you have to add ingredients and mix it in, but just a little bit, not over mix some. Um, so I don't know if it's because I'm not mixing my ingredients or what. But they look good, and it doesn't affect the taste, at least not with my English muffins. So that's what they look like. I'm going to let them cool and then probably going to taste one of the small ones since I've never made these before. And then we'll pack them up for the freezer. Alright, so here are the biscuits. I froze them and then I put them in this bag. They've been um, frozen overnight and we tasted one last night but I didn't film it so we get to taste another one. This is what it looks like. I just put it in the toaster oven and split it open. I think that this is warm enough in the middle. It might be cold in the middle, but it's not frozen, so that's what it looks like on the inside. It's really good. You want a piece? You think it's yummy? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's still crispy on the outside. Mm-hmm. And soft on the inside, so they do freeze well. Alright, today we're making banana bread, or I guess banana chocolate chip muffins. Let's make them. You want to help? I'll try to link the recipe down below. This I'm almost positive I got from all recipes. It says it makes 18 muffins. I'd rather make loaves. 
I don't know. Is that going to be two full loaves? They might be small. That'll be all right. I don't know if I adjusted this recipe or if it's the way the recipe was written, but I do whole wheat and all-purpose flour. So One cup of whole wheat flour, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose, and if you want to see my trick for measuring three quarters of a cup, instead of measuring half a cup and a quarter cup, I measure one cup and then I pour it into a quarter cup and take that away. Uh -oh. That's three quarters. What's wrong? You dropped your banana? It's alright. You got one more to peel. One teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder. teaspoon of salt. Go ahead and mash them up. Keep mashing. You're doing a great job. Quarter cup of oil. Keep mashing. Half a cup of milk. I'm going to use almond milk. The recipe calls for milk or yogurt. I use almond milk. Almond milk. Almond milk. One egg. A teaspoon of vanilla. Or maybe a little bit more. Uh oh. What's wrong? Oh yeah, it made it brown. That's all right. Half a cup of brown sugar. All right. Oh, it's really good. Perfect. Put this in. It loves me. Milky, yep. Mm -hmm. Start with that fork. Mine with a fork. Half a cup of walnuts and half a cup of chocolate chips. How about that? There's the walnuts. Ready? Stir it up. To make pumpkin bread. You want to make pumpkin? We make a pumpkin cake like this too? Yeah. Yeah, then we have a little choice between what we want. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make some pumpkin bread too. I have this can of pumpkin that expires in December, so it's a good thing I'm using it up. And the recipe I'm using is from All Recipes. It's called Down, Down East Main Pumpkin Bread. It's actually the number one rated recipe. I think it's the number one. It's either that or the cinnamon bun recipe. I think they go back and forth. But it's got like 7,000 reviews. So it's um, got a lot of sugar in it though. But I guess pumpkin doesn't have that much sugar in it compared to like bananas. So I guess you have to add sugar one way or another. I'll just follow this recipe. I am going to cut the sugar down a little bit. A lot of the recipe or the reviews say two cups is fine. It calls for three cups of sugar for two loaves of bread. So I think two cups will be fine. Four eggs, two cups of sugar. Oh, my heart. Oh, it helped. One cup of oil. Two-thirds cup of water, three and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Just stir one at a time. Yeah, I still gotta put stuff in here. One teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Which I'm gonna go shy on that because this is freshly ground. 
very strong. Same with the cloves. Calls for half a teaspoon, but I'm gonna go shy on that as well. Quarter teaspoon ground ginger. All right, that's everything. Mix up the wet, mix up the dry. I'm gonna put stuff in here too. Walnuts and chocolate chips. And make it like a cake. And then bake it like a cake. Put a cup of walnuts and I'm gonna do a full cup of chocolate chips. Oh. <laughs> chocolate chips. Put the flour in. Okay, go ahead and stir a little bit and then mama will stir. Right here are my cakes. They've been cooling, so I'm gonna cut them and then vacuum seal them. There's the pumpkin. These two are pumpkin, and then this one's the banana bread. Okay, so I have the banana bread. I cut it into pieces, and I put it in the bag. This is a food saver bag, and I froze it like this so that when I vacuum seal, it doesn't um, squish it too much. I'll just go ahead and vacuum seal these and do the same thing with the pumpkin bread. Okay, so on the docket tonight is cornbread. I wanna make a couple variations. I have a cornbread recipe on my channel and um, it has, what did I put in it? Jalapenos and chives, I think. What I'm gonna make, I wanna make plain regular cornbread muffins. I also wanna make what we call corn doggers, which is cornbread muffins with a little chunk or diced up hot dogs added to it. I may make some jalapeno ones as well, so. Um, I'm gonna make just one at a, one batch at a time because I only have two muffin tins. Um, but we'll go ahead and mix this up, and then I'll show you how I add the hot dogs. these at Costco. These are like quarter pound. They're supposed to be Polish sausages, but they're um, uncured, grass-fed, uh, basically hot dogs. So that's what I'm going to use, but they're pretty big. If you're using regular hot dogs, you might need like three or four for two dozen muffins. Depends on how much hot dog you want in it. And you can cut large chunks and put like right in the middle, or you can dice it up and stir it in with the batter. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and fill the muffin tins, and depending on how big the pieces of hot dog you use, you got to make sure you don't fill them too full, because that piece of hot dog will displace some of the volume. And we can always put a little on top. You can leave the hot dog sticking out, but I find that they kind of get overcooked and kind of, like, hard, I guess. So I like to keep them completely submerged in the muffin. So if there's a little piece sticking out, I'll just put a little dollop of the batter right on top. Now what I do is, you can do this in a baggie, I'm just gonna do it in container. I'm gonna toss these with just a little bit of, you can use cornmeal or the flour that you use to make your muffins or cornstarch. Just want something to kind of coat them so they're not wet. That helps them stay in the muffin otherwise and I just put like a teaspoon of cornmeal. Otherwise, if they're wet, when they bake, they'll just fall right out. So your first bite, the hot dog will like fall out onto your lap. So just toss them around in something. Like that. And then go ahead and 
put them in. So these are all ready to go. They go into a pretty hot oven, 425, like 15, 20 minutes. Put these in. Alright, so here's all the cornbread out of the oven. Looks awesome. I'm going to, I have it on a cooling rack. I'm going to put these in the freezer just like this overnight and then tomorrow we'll pack them up for long term. Okay, so I have two dozen of the corn dog muffins and then I also made these ones are half jalapeno, half regular, since my little one probably won't ha want jalapeno ones. So I have two packs of those. So I'm going to be using these for chili, soup, um, pulled pork, just to have a snack, breakfast, anything like that. All right, so the last thing we're going to make for the freezer is some chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to, I think I'm going to bake some, and then I'm also going to make some dough balls for the freezer so they can be baked quickly later. I'm going to make a double batch. And I just used the Toll House recipe. The only difference is I use vegan margarine to make it dairy-free for me. And I'm going to use dairy-free chocolate chips, which if you look at the ingredients, um, quite often you can find dairy-free chocolate chips or chocolate chips made without dairy ingredients without having to buy like specialty dairy-free chocolate chips. So Ghirardelli is a brand that I like, um, you have to read the ingredients, some of the flavors are not, but the semi-sweet, which is what you'd normally use for chocolate chips, chocolate chip cookies is dairy free, and then often the, the store brand, so I have Wegmans store brand, also I think the Kirkland store brand are made without dairy ingredients, so we'll get these mixed up and in the freezer. So here are my cookies. I have four one dozen packs of frozen dough balls. So those can be baked anytime. They're vacuum sealed, so they'll stay fresh for a long time. Even if these last all the way to Christmas time, they should be nice and fresh. I have two packs, one dozen each of cookies that are already baked. So these will be great for, you can just thaw them and then have them right away. And I have one more pan that's in the oven. I'll probably just put that in an airtight container for this week and let me show you everything else all right so here it is all packed up this is not ideal for how i would like my freezer to look right now but it's the only room that i had left so i have my um, quick breads like my pumpkin bread and my banana bread here here's the corn bread muffins it's just a loaf of bread the um, cookie dough is here back behind there is the pancakes i put the baked cookies there for easy access and then I even had to stash the biscuits back there. So I hope that you found this video useful. I will be sure to leave any recipe links or any other information you might need in the description box. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to subscribe and hit like for my video. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.